But why is she trying to take a wife? Because the one time she had one time the future. I've always thought that a pastor has the, the hardest job that a person could have. And the reason for that is because I think that a pastor has to be as close to perfect as a person can get for obvious reasons. You've been entrusted with God's children. You're supposed to run a church. You're supposed to lead the people in that church teach them the ways of the Lord, be well-versed in scripture, be able to pray for people and, and, and guide people in, in, in the way that God wants them to go and all of these things. And that comes with a whole lot of responsibility. You know, that's one of the reasons why I've always told people when they would suggest that one day I'll be a pastor, that that's not something that is, that's, that I'm aspiring to do. Right. Because, I would have to take that job like way more serious than anything I've ever done, in my opinion. But unfortunately, we know that there is a lot of shady men, a lot of men that have selfish ambitions and stuff like that, that will go into the church and, and take the job of a pastor and then they fail miserably you know um something just recently happened in my mother-in-law's church where they had to get rid of a pastor because he had some shady stuff going on and then we always see stuff like uh what they say about td jake saying he got some stuff going on and he in the closet and then you see they, they talk about mike todd all the time because he running his church in a way that's not really <laughs> uh normal i say you know um it's a lot of people out there that's that's supposed to be a representative of god and they're doing things in an unorthodox way and a lot of the time it's from selfish ambition right and they lead people astray because of those ambitions um i'm saying all this to say this i saw a clip going viral this week and I'm getting ready to show y'all this clip, but it's of a pastor being confronted by his mistress and the mistress is pregnant and the man's wife is right there and chaos ensued when this situation happened. But um, I just want to, we're going we gonna to get into some things. I, I want to show y'all what scripture says about pastors. But before we do that, let's go ahead and get into these clips. So y'all see what went down. The lady had to be removed from the church. You know, she ended up cutting up. She ended up cussing and everything, which I feel is super disrespectful. This whole situation disrespectful. The pastor and what he did to his wife and in God's church and he out here fornicating and committing adultery and all that type of stuff and holding the position that he's holding. That's really disappointing, you know? But then I also want to point out at the end what the uh the two ladies were talking about if you i don't know if you heard it because she they, it's kind of low but basically what happened was somebody asked i'm assuming the person that's holding the camera they asked why would she blame the wife though the girl say i of uh, because of one reason the girl say what because of the pastor and that's true the pastor has all the responsibility in this situation 
You know what I'm saying? This type of stuff should never happen. And it would never happen if the pastor had self-control and he was really focused on doing his job the right way, which is the godly way. Right? So, um, <laughs> it's crazy, like I said, man, um, that people would, would take these jobs and not take them serious. And then you will see a situation where a wife is in a position where because she's trying to do the godly thing, nine times out of ten is the woman, she's going to be, you know, somebody that, you know, is a, a good woman. You can't be a, 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 a pastor's wife, I don't believe, and, and not be a good woman. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because there's a lot of responsibility come with that. And in this situation, this pastor's wife has been humiliated in the church in front of the whole congregation. And she's getting ready to stand by her husband, as though it seems. Y'all check this out. We have this, this saying in our hearts and in our minds that he's supposed to be the example for the church, right? We, he's supposed to be perfect for the church because his knowledge of the scripture tells us that don't fall, right? But that's not true. God said all have fallen short. All have fallen short of his glory. Nobody is perfect. Deacons, mothers, members, nobody is perfect. I thank y'all for all that y'all have done. For me and for Pastor. Because people look at him as the one that failed. But by us being one, we both failed. We both failed. We failed you all. We failed ourselves. We failed our family. But God is still good. God is still good and he can restore everything that we felt like we lost. Everything. I respect her for trying to approach this thing the way she approached it. You know, she's actually standing there by her man. She's being forgiving, all of those things, right? She's doing things in a, what you would expect of a woman in her position. But again, her husband failed in a miserable way, in the, the one of the most horrible ways you can, because we always hear this. Oh, the pastors, they, they sleeping with the women in the church and they doing this and they doing that. This pastor actually did it, allegedly, and he got the woman pregnant. And she's standing up there making excuses for this man's behavior, right? Saying that, oh, he's not supposed to be perfect. We all fall short and all of those things, which is true. But if you're going to do these kind of things, then you can't be a pastor. And the thing that the reason why she was standing up there is because right now, oh, at the time, they were getting ready to vote on whether or not this pastor should be able to stay. And she was pretty much pleading her case and, and trying to, you know, persuade the church to vote in favor of him staying. And that can't happen. You know what I'm saying? True enough. Um, God can restore you. God will forgive you and all of those things. But you can't hold a position like this where you're supposed to be an authority figure over a flock and, and you're supposed to teach people the ways of the Lord and you're supposed to be somebody that's above reproach. You're supposed to lead by example. So if this is the example of the man in the church, why would his 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 uh congregation, you know, why would they try to be the best they can be if the pastor ain't even trying to be the best he can be? And then we can just forgive him and go on about our business and, you know, he done hurt so many people already. Like a lot of people probably will lose faith and they walk, you know, they'll, they'll get led astray and they walk and lose faith in God and stuff like that because of the person that they looking up to that's supposed to be so godly. You know? So in situations like this, like I said, I understand the wife. She's trying to beat up by her husband's side. You know, she's trying to be understanding and forgiving and all of those things. And all of that is noble. But this cannot be allowed. This can't be overlooked. 
And I'm going to show y'all some scripture about what the Bible says about a pastor. 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy 3, starting in verse 1. Here is a trustworthy saying, whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. Overseer can also be a pastor or a deacon. Um, now, the overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money, which is important because we know that there's a lot of pastors that want to pass that collection plate and they riding around in Rolls Royces and uh, living in big mansions and all that kind of stuff. And ain't nothing necessarily wrong with that. But if that's what you love, if that's if that's if that's clearly your motivation from for uh, teaching God's word so that you can get a, a big, <laughs> a big salary and you can take up all these collections and you can go and blow all that money on a, a, a extravagant lifestyle. If that's your motivation for preaching, then you in the wrong line of business. You need to go out there and be a businessman. Right. Um, Verse four says he must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him. And he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. How can you respect a man that's out here cheating on his wife and sleeping on the sleeping with the women in the church? And then he doesn't mess around and obviously slept with probably where well, he had to be sleeping with him unprotected on top of that, risking his wife's life because he done got a woman pregnant. And that's evident that he ain't been using no protection. This man is not fit to preach. And from what I understand, they voted him out and rightfully so. And um, again, fellas, if you out there and you decide you want to be a pastor, you 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 love God and and you want to, you know, you want to share God's word and you want God to use you. Just understand that you will be faced with a lot of spiritual warfare because the devil wants you to fall. Number two, you got to make sure you really have a strong relationship with God and a strong desire to do things God in a godly way. And you can't take this lightly. You got to strive for perfection. I know Jesus Christ is the only man that ever walked on the face of this earth and was perfect. But if you're going to hold that position, you got to really be trying to follow Christ's footsteps. You got to really be trying to be as Christ-like as possible. Otherwise, you will possibly destroy other people's walk and destroy other people's lives and drive people away from God. And you're supposed to take that position to bring people to God. That's all I got to say about that. I'll see y'all on the next one.